The year was 1996 and the gaming industry was in a true boom period like no other. The fifth generation of home consoles were beginning to take shape, and as it did, so ushered in the 3D era. Nintendo had again revolutionized the gaming industry with their brand new Nintendo 64, powerful new hardware named after its 64-bit CPU. For the very first time, I was witnessing Mario travel through grandiose 3D environments that quite literally drew me into brand new worlds. I would emerge into various realms with a wide array of eye-popping environments captivating me at every turn. As I mentioned in the past, I was faithful to the Nintendo brand most of my early adolescence, but as I slowly grew into my teen years, Sega had slowly taken over a portion of my gaming space. I started seeing much more mature content offered by other companies, including the brand new juggernaut known as the Sony PlayStation. Seeing the likes of Twisted Metal on display at my local mom and pop shops, along with the massive campaign ads for the upcoming Final Fantasy VII, felt surreal. But it wasn't just that which made my allegiance to Nintendo continue to sway, it would be the announcement for the upcoming Mega Man 8. My biggest obsession with Nintendo early on was primarily due in large part to their third party support. As much as Super Mario was a system seller, I would be initially drawn to the likes of Contra, Castlevania, and Mega Man. A big part of my early gaming influence came by means of tape trading my brother would do over the years with friends. By the end of 96, early 97, it was quickly apparent most of these third party titles were missing from the upcoming N64 lineup. I was puzzled why these games weren't here, especially after their huge presence on earlier Nintendo hardware, yet for whatever the reason, I would officially make the jump to the Sony PlayStation along with my purchase of Mega Man 8 soon after. Where some may have an allegiance to a specific console or brand, I for one have always been sold more specifically on the overall software. The most important thing to me is the lineup of games that a console offers. As I get older, I had a strong appreciation for many game companies, but one thing was for certain, where Mega Man went, best believe I went, and that alone was enough to buy this new PlayStation console. So with that said, how would Mega Man's jump to the fifth generation of home consoles turn out? Well, in order to find out, I need to clarify something out the gate. The mainline Mega Man titles for the very first time were releasing over over multiple platforms. Initially debuting on the brand new Sony PlayStation, we would soon after receive it on the Sega Saturn. For the very first time, we had choices with our Mega Man experience. Since Mega Man 8 initially launched on the PlayStation, for this review, I will be covering the PlayStation version in detail. With that said, I'll never forget my initial purchase of the game. I was out and about for the weekend at the local mall. As I barreled my way through the sliding entry doors, I directly made a beeline for the escalators heading to the nearest electronic store. At that time, we had a few choices for game shops, our first being Electronic Boutique, which was one of my personal favorites at that time. Having a wide variety of import games for a vast majority of consoles, with the larger portion coming by means of the PlayStation and Saturn. There was also software etc that continued that trend, only additionally specializing in PC software, so I would see many fun big box PC variations of home consoles released just by browsing the various mall locations. For this trip however, I managed to run into KB Toys out of all places first. It's here that I gazed upon the massive red and blue glass case encapsulating the various hot new releases for that summer. Something in the case that day instantly caught my attention. Glaring back was a shimmering blue and white PlayStation jewel case. The case was etched with a gold inscription across a label that read Mega Man 8 Anniversary Collector's Edition. I didn't hesitate. I quickly found an associate and made my purchase. Now, why I place emphasis on the Mega Man Anniversary Collector's Edition is for whatever reason the game was originally branded this way for a limited time. What's key upon opening the initial print run for the PS1 release would be that you are treated to a book containing the history of the very first seven Mega Man installments leading into the events of this new release. The artwork is very well done here and some of the best I have seen still to this day. If you're considering picking up Mega Man 8 for PS1, keep in mind there is two variations, one being this anniversary edition and the other being the later standard release. So if you're in the market to pick up an anniversary edition for collection purposes, be sure to ask the seller if the book is included or check if it has been tossed inside the manual. I'm not too sure if the standard release has any revisions to gameplay, but for this review, the footage captured is from the Anniversary Edition. Moving forward into Mega Man 8, Hayato Kaji would again take on the primary role of lead artist, guiding a vast majority of the project. This would ultimately give Inafune the opportunity to take on the role as head producer. In many ways, Kaji considered himself a student of Inafune and the two men would work side by side, leading the team into a new era for Mega Man. Now, with the Mega Man series going multi-platform, the development team would have their work cut out for them. Now tasked with a much larger work Workload, the team would now need to coordinate releases across the Sega Saturn and Sony PlayStation. Fun fact, the release of Mega Man 8 here stateside for the PlayStation almost became an afterthought. Sony initially rejected the North American release altogether due to their push for 3D 
Sony-inspired titles. This high demand for 3D graphics almost sealed the deal completely. However, Sony receiving the news that the Sega Saturn was receiving their own unique version of Mega Man 8 forced Sony to approve the release on the conditions that they have exclusive content, keeping Sega from having a leg up in the race at that time, and as a result, gave us the Mega Man Anniversary Collector's Edition. Now, on the flip side, I think the Sega Saturn still made out overall, being released with additional content in the form of brand new boss battles that bring back a few familiar faces in Cutman and Woodman. Saturn fans would also be greeted to a bonus mode with official artwork, sound test, and an animation test to watch the various cutscenes. Mega Man 8 introduces us to newcomer of the series Duo. His design was specifically created for the underlying story of Mega Man 8. The conception of Duo was initially intended to be an all new design created by the genius of Dr. Kosak, but for story purposes of Mega Man 8, decided to retcon this in favor of an origin story spread across the reaches of space and time. Duo would eventually be reconceptualized, but maintained many of his Russian inspired traits given to him by Dr. Kosak. A new robot contest was held for Mega Man 8, with over 110,000 submissions received. This time around, Capcom had a specific blueprint in mind for the general robotic aesthetic. This would showcase the artistic design approach Capcom was going for with their new line of robot masters. Young roboticists would go to work designing their creations and six winners would be chosen this time around with the remaining two robot masters designed by Capcom. What's interesting here is that the designs created by Capcom were Tangu Man and Astro Man, which funny enough are the same two robot masters that return in Mega Man and Base. This may give some clues to why there was only six new robot masters present in Mega Man and Base. In addition, the musical score for Mega Man 8 was vastly unique between regions and platform. The primary score was composed by Shusaku Uchiyama. Musical scores differ in the arrangement between the two console releases and remixes were added for the optional bosses in the Saturn release. Additionally, Tengu Man stage has a completely different track between the PS1 and Saturn release as well. The Japanese version of Mega Man 8 also features the J-pop group Ganassia, delivering two tracks in electrical communication in a brand new way. Capcom would take full advantage of the new CD-based technology to tell a large portion of their new Mega Man story over full motion video cutscenes. Our story opens directly after the events of Mega Man 7 in the far off reaches of space. Circling the planet Saturn, two entities can be seen exchanging blows. In climactic fashion, the two face off in a head-on display, only to collide into one another, resulting with a crash course plummeting towards Earth. Meanwhile, back on Earth, Mega Man gets tangled up with Base and Trouble once more in an attempt to settle their score from their previous altercations. Base still hell-bent on besting our Blue Bomber ultimately gets outplayed by Mega Man once again as he blasts Base into a nearby building, trapping him long enough to take off with his sister Roll, arriving just in time to inform Mega Man of a recent finding from Dr. Light. The team leaves Base behind, vowing payback on Mega Man once more. Dr. Light informs Mega Man of a recent meteor crash that has been emitting strange energy waves. Dr. Light tasks Mega Man to investigate the incident located on a nearby island. When Mega Man arrives to the destination, he discovers good old Dr. Wily extracting a purple energy orb only to flee the scene upon Mega Man's arrival. Mega Man proceeds to give chase only to spot a damaged robot nearby. After examining the robot, Mega Man requests Dr. Light to retrieve it for much needed repairs. Upon being discovered by our Blue Bomber, Dr. Wily releases four new robot masters to thwart off Mega Man's trail. However, something is different about these robot masters. They appear to be fueled by something dark and sinister. These aren't your standard robot masters. These new creations of Dr. Wily appear to be supercharged by this new discovered energy source extracted from the recent crash site. As Mega Man begins pursuit of Dr. Wily, he not only has to face off against an all new batch of super robots, but recover this new energy source infused within them. Mega Man 8 opens with a pretty radical overhaul to the traditional means of navigating the Blue Bomber's journey. The first change that initially jumps out at you is the ability to use multiple weapons on screen simultaneously. This grants the player a unique way of progressing through the stages with a bit more strategy involved. You can fire an enemy skill off while still having your Mega Buster equipped. This is done by having the Mega Buster mapped to another trigger button altogether, giving you means to alternate between the two weapons on the fly. Mega Man 8 introduces swimming into the franchise. It's the one ability that I had never expected Mega Man to have. In some way, it feels sort of odd to me. I'm so used to plunging through water, avoiding death at all costs, yet having the ability to swim also makes me feel as if I'm playing another series altogether. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but I don't know if I'm comfortable with it either. The shop system for Mega Man 7 returns this time around with a vast assortment of new goodies ranging from Mega Buster upgrades, energy and dexterity equipment, to extra live parts. These unique parts and abilities can be purchased at the shop from Roll over at Light Labs. This time around, in order to purchase these upgrades, you must locate and retrieve specific bolts unique to Mega Man 8. These bolts are scattered throughout the stages with a finite supply. 
40 bolts in total. Unlike in the past where you would score bolts through enemy drops in hidden areas, this time around you need to be very specific with each upgrade you buy. Now, what makes this setup quite interesting this time around are the specific ways you can combine their abilities and parts to get the most out of your purchase power. You may combine the means of the auto shoot, boost part, shooting part, and high speed charge to allow for a continuous spread of bullets. Or maybe go for something like the super recover, energy balancer, energy saver, and exchanger to have the opportunity to be able to play the game using almost exclusively special weapons. The combinations are endless, but one thing I would say for certain is grab the exit part before anything. This item is a must buy and will save you a ton of time backtracking between stages to locate the bolts. It's quite a lot of side work, but it's well worth it in the long haul. Rush now comes equipped with four brand new adapters in this adventure. Remember Rush Coil and Rush Jet? Two of the most essential assist weapons throughout the entire series? Yeah, they're gone. Replace this time with, well, let's just go over them one by one. For starters, you unlock these adapters by defeating the various mid-stage mini-bosses you encounter along your travels. Defeating them as you progress unlocks one of the four adapters and so forth as you continue on. The first of these new adapters come in the form of the Rush Question. I wouldn't even call this an adapter, it's more so this game's version of the Eddie encounters. Rush teleports on screen to deliver a random health item to Mega Man. Our second adapter comes by means of the Rush Bike, which is just as it sounds. Rush transforms into a Rush Cycle and Mega Man hauls ass across the open roads, or should I say, stages ahead. Rush has the ability to fire projectiles while also speeding up to clear various hazards ahead. My only issue however, is there's really not many designated areas throughout the stages that fully utilize this adapter. As with the unique rush jet stages that doubles as a shmup stage, I personally would have loved to see a designated section to make use of the riding sections, almost similar to the ride along sections of Gyro Man stage in Mega Man 5. I think they missed a great opportunity to use this adapter a bit more in depth. Our third adapter comes in the form of the rush charger. Selecting this assist will have rush take jet form and hover across the stage above, dropping various care packages down from the heavens. Finally, we have the rush bomber, similar to the charger, only this time rush bombards the stage laying waste to the enemies below. The stages throughout Mega Man 8 take a unique approach from the tried and true formula. Freeze Man stage is a great example of this, showcasing the game's strength with a wide array of unique playstyles. This stage opens with Mega Man running gunning his way across the frozen city streets that have a striking resemblance to the opening stage of Mega Man X. As you make your way further into the frozen suburbs, you discover icy slopes burrowed within. It is here you are greeted to the all new hoverboard sections that find Mega Man speeding through the various platform segments with a good deal of precision jumps that take the environment's physics into account as you time your jumps accordingly. As you power through the icy streets, timing is key with each jump taken with the utmost caution to navigate your way to the areas ahead. Another example of this creative stage design occurs all throughout Tengu Man stage. This stage consistently keeps you on the edge of your seat, timing jumps with the flow of the wind, testing your reflexes with the shifty platforms and awkward enemy placement. I'm not even going to attempt to grab this bolt my first playthrough. You almost get a sense of reward as you make your way to the following segment that unfolds into your very first shmup segment of the game. It is here where you travel across the lands with your canine counterpart Rush, recruiting allies along the way. Each ally you pick up has a unique power that complements your overall arsenal, acting as a permanent upgrade for the segment. You can make various combinations of upgrades between Auto, Beat, and Eddie. It's a good time. Swordman stage is another highlight of Mega Man 8. The stage feels very ambitious, finding Mega Man entering the ruins of an ancient tomb decorated in puzzles and riddles giving you the option to branch out and complete the various chambers within. The puzzles are simple enough that it won't slow down gameplay and the second half of the stage finds you riding along the lava filled depths deep within the earth's crust. Galaxy Man stage is for the most part experimental at best. The stage is filled with corridors that have you switching back and forth between upper and lower levels opening and closing alternating chambers for progression. The only issue here is this tends to get very tedious very quickly and if you're attempting to backtrack to look for screws, you're going to be here for a while. The robot masters of Mega Man 8 have a very unique feel to them. In many ways, they have a distinct artistic style that makes them stand out collectively from other games in the series. I always get a kick out of facing Search Man. This two-headed robot master is equipped with the latest and greatest tech to hunt down Mega Man. The only problem here is he doesn't seem to have his shit together. Constantly bickering with his other half, this robotic hunter has a bounty on Mega Man and uses his assortment of explosive gear to take out our blue bomber. Tangu Man is another standout for me coming equipped with a razor-winged jet engine on his 
back as he charges towards Mega Man at mock speed. His triple bladed fan grants him a wide array of cutters and whirlwind blasts made for a very well rounded boss encounter. If you don't time your jumps just right, you're taking a nosedive off the stage indefinitely. I always get a kick out of facing Astro Man, looking like a robotic tour guide that came straight out of the planetarium. Astro Man is a master illusionist who creates alternative dimensions to confuse Mega Man throughout the battle. He additionally has an awesome design with the bulk of his build being a large rotating sphere with a torso popping out at the top. He had a very fun color scheme down to his bright green head sporting a black visor with glowing red eyes. His enemy skill coming in the form of the Astro Crush might be my favorite move to use throughout, a devastating maneuver that creates a meteor storm targeting all enemies on screen. Another enemy skill I tend to use more often is the homing sniper which fires a homing missile that travels in a straight line across the screen. If an enemy manages to intersect with the missile's crosshairs, it follows suit. Additionally, it may also be charged to lock on and fire at multiple on-screen enemies at once. Something to keep in mind when playing throughout Mega Man 8 your first time, there are no E-Tanks throughout the journey. None whatsoever, not even to purchase at the shop. However, to offset this somewhat, the stages throughout Mega Man 8 are broken into two segments with a midway checkpoint. Upon clearing this checkpoint, everything from your health to your weapon reserves to the rush adapters completely refill. In the event you die, they additionally refill, and if you run out of lives completely, you start back at the midway checkpoint that is if you choose to continue on that specific stage, so it's not entirely bad. My recommendation is if you tend to have difficulty on the robot masters in general, I would save all your health assists until the end of the stage, giving you a bit of an advantage going into them. After managing to take out the first four robot masters, we arrive back to Light Labs with the newly acquired energy cores for Dr. Light. After examination, Dr. Light determines these cores are a powerful form of energy which Dr. Wily must now have an abundance of due to his discovery of the meteor. Light continues to follow up with Duo while informing Mega Man he needs to track down the fallen meteor in hopes to locate Dr. Wily. Just then, Duo awakens and discovers the energy cores only to destroy them upon realizing the robot he encountered in space is still alive, taking off in pursuit. Mega Man proceeds to follow Duo to an abandoned mine shaft where Duo resides, searching for the robot's whereabouts. Upon seeking out Duo, the two have a mild exchange only for Duo to flee once more. With intel from Proto Man, Mega Man manages to locate the newly constructed Wily Tower, only to be subdued by a giant Wily bot protecting the tower's perimeter. As the robot begins to suck the life out of Mega Man, which feels like it goes on for an eternity, Duo arrives and makes light work of the situation, aiding Mega Man and informing him that these newly discovered cores just so happen to be an evil energy source. Duo has been in pursuit of this evil energy, which ultimately manifested into a dark presence he has been at arms with, attempting to track down throughout the far off reaches of space. Due to the evil energy's effects, it has now created a barrier that restricts access to Wily's tower. Mega Man is now tasked with taking out the remainder of Wily's new forces infused with the evil energy to break the barrier and gain access to the tower. Once the remaining robot masters are defeated, Wily's tower's barrier is lifted and Mega Man makes his way forward, defeating the new evil that lurks throughout. The Wily tower stages do a great job incorporating the new gimmicks of the Mega Man 8 experience. Level 1 opens with another hoverboarding segment that will put your reflexes to the ultimate test. With my initial run, I would always nosedive towards the very end of this segment, but as I go back now to it, my muscle memory kicks in and I can zip right through it. The boss stage also surprisingly enough utilizes the Meg Ball you received all the way back at the beginning of the game. This weapon is pretty lackluster, and at times I forget I have it all together until trying to find a way to reach this enemy altogether. It's a challenging boss fight your first time around, and it can get pretty frustrating if you aren't standing perfectly in position to kick the Mega Ball straight up this robot's nether regions. Wily Stage 2 also brings back our second Shemup stage, only this time around, you really need to be on your toes due to the winding corridors that you must snake your way through. If you don't stay ahead of the stage, it auto-scrolls and you can easily get crushed by the stage itself. In time, you eventually run into base again, only this time he gets desperate and resorts to infusing himself with evil energy, aka robo-steroids, in order to best our hero. After punking base again this time around, you will make your way to a brand new devil fight, only this time, he's in a sticky situation and doesn't have that same killer instinct his yellow counterparts have. After another gauntlet of the traditional robot master variety, you make your way to the good old doctor himself. The final fight with Wily isn't too awfully difficult this time around, but again be mindful that this go around you have no E-Tanks to bail you out in the event you start taking damage early on. Their first round is more or less an endurance round, shooting your shot whenever you have the opportunity to do so. When he begins to open his jaw up for a charge blast, be sure to shut his yap quickly by repeatedly firing away with your trusty buster. In due time, Wily's war machine will again employ
implode in on itself, leaving just you in a lone Wily capsule for the final showdown. This time around, Wily isn't nearly as trollless as he was in Mega Man 7. He manages to stay in range just enough so you can catch the bottom of his capsule with your charge shot. His bullshit antics return, so you need to slide and jump in a timed fashion as the orbs descend upon you. He quickly switches up attacks now, making this fight much more manageable. On top of that, your charge shot does significantly more damage than it did in Mega Man 7. If you have managed to save your rush charge adapter till this point, you should have enough health to put this old bastard away for good. Upon Wily's defeat, the evil energy is destroyed and the Mega Man gang is able to stop its potential spread throughout the world. However, due to your fight with Wily, Mega Man manages to become infected with this evil energy. With the ability to see the good within Mega Man, Duo manages to cure our blue bomber, destroying the remaining fragments of the evil energy within him. With the evil energy contained, Duo states his mission is finished, requesting that Proto Man take our hero back home to Light Labs to reunite with the team. As the team rejoices, Proto Man informs Mega Man that Duo truly thinks him for all he has done and the credits roll as our story comes to an end. Here's what I'll say about Mega Man 8. Moving into the next generation of home consoles, this feels like a natural progression for the classic experience. The Capcom team attempted to freshen up a series that was considered to be stagnant by the 8th installment. Whether that translates as well as they hoped, it's entirely up to interpretation. They went out on a limb here and took chances with this franchise. In a modern climate where we rarely see developers take these risks with their IPs, relying heavily on the already established formula to maximize their return, I commend Capcom for trying trying out new things here. They weren't afraid to take risks here, and I appreciate them for it. I always looked forward to new installments in the franchise and seeing what creative new ideas were in store for us. Sure, we didn't need to have Mega Man learn how to swim since the last time we have seen him, but it didn't hinder the experience either. In a way, it switched up the gameplay just enough to keep the flow of the stages fresh. I enjoyed the new hoverboard segments and felt they encapsulated the tight precision platforming quite well. The Mega Man series is known for its hardcore platforming roots, and I feel here it was warranted. The shmup segments were another breath of fresh air, where in some ways we lost the use of the rush jet, what we made up for here was variety in stage design and storytelling. The sheer variety of power-ups you can purchase throughout in conjunction with the various combinations available created a fun way to tackle each playthrough. With new FMV cutscenes and voice acting for the characters, it felt like Mega Man was evolving. At times, the dialogue was silly, but I very much enjoyed the cutscenes throughout the story told here. Mega Man 8 felt experimental, and as an early release on new hardware, a attempting to give us new takes on the standard run and gun formula. To say this game is just so-so isn't really taking the time to see all the moving parts we have in the underlining framework. There's a lot to offer here, and although a simpler formula may be ideal, we still need to reach out and try new things from time to time. Remaining stagnant will only stunt your potential. With that said, the classic Mega Man series for the very first time will enter its dark ages. Time will pass, and for now, our blue bomber will rest. When we return, we will be headed into the future, a new millennium is upon us as Mega Man would reawaken in the future while going back to the past all the same with Mega Man 9.